Today we're going to be doing a project that I've been wanting to do ever since we moved uh, into this house. We're going to be finalizing the installation of the in-floor Radian heat system. The pipes are already uh, set up, they're ready in the ground, in the cement. Today we're really going to be connecting the pipes to the different fittings and then uh, running the water through the system and starting to heat the floors. So let's take a look at the components, the fittings, and the overall setup. Here we have an 8-zone manifold, a pump, a switch relay, air scoop, an expansion tank, air vent, Y strainer, two double gauges. On the top side we have the pressure of the system, and then on the bottom we have the temperature. Let's review the basically what came with the house. We have 16 orange pipes. These are half an inch PEX tubing running through out the entire basement. This is the 50 gallon gas hot water tank that we're gonna be using to heat the water inside radiant heat system. Uh, before this tank was connected in series to this one. In my previous video I showed how to disconnect them and also how to flush this. Let's look at all the different fittings that we're gonna be using for the setup. All right, so we have all the components here of our radiant in-floor system. And let's kind of walk through the components and also follow the direction of the hot water. So this is gonna be the very beginning where the hot water is going to uh, enter the system. At the very beginning, I wanna have a gauge that shows me the temperature and the pressure of the hot water coming in. Moving along, we have the manifold. Eight zones, so each of these represents a zone, pipe going in and out. So the hot water it comes in first here, then goes into the PEX pipe, goes into the floor, and comes back and is connected to this section of the manifold. After all the eight zones, it's going to come out of the manifold here and it's going to follow along uh, into the pump that you can technically put at the beginning of the system. So you, I could put the pump here, take the hot water from the hot water tank and push it into the system. Or you can put it on the other end, like I did here, where the pump will pull the colder water back into the uh, hot water tank. After the pump, we have the white strainer that will collect any particles or any rust or anything like that that is in the system. We have the expansion tank, we have the air scoop. When the water gets out of the system here, I want to have another gauge to show me the exit pressure and exit temperature. All right, let's get started. Now what we're gonna do is simply connect these eight pipes to these connections here. It's really simple. You just unscrew this one here. For each one, we'll unscrew it. We'll put in the uh, this little ring on the pipe. Then we'll insert the pipe into this fitting and then we'll just tighten it to make it a nice seal here. So we'll do this eight times and then we'll move on to the return blue pipes.
All right, so the overall the system is installed. I've actually waited about a month, a month and a half to film this because I wanted to make sure that once after I installed everything that the system is working well and all the potential issues have been uh, uh, solved. So what I want to do now is just going to give you one more tour of uh, how the water is flowing through the system. Be mindful of the lessons learned while building the system. All right, so this is the starting point. This is the hot water tank that is basically supplying all the water for the heating system. Uh, here we have the hot water leaving the, the tank and then we have the colder water coming back. It is a closed loop system, so the water gets recycled. Tank, uh, the temperature is, is roughly 40 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And when the water comes back, we lose about 10 degrees Celsius. So here the, the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius coming back uh, and roughly 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, also, what I can see here is that the pressure in PSI is pretty much consistent. We're roughly around 12 to 15 PSI in uh, the overall system. So the pressure is the same leaving the tank and coming back. So here we have in the red PEX pipe, we have the hot water coming into the system directly from the hot water tank that we just saw. It gets into the upper portion of the manifold and it follows the lines into the floor and then coming back up the blue pipe pulled by this uh, pump. The water continues here. We have a white strainer just in case there's any debris. The debris get accumulated here. Then we continue further into, this is an air scoop. So if there's any air in the system in the water, the air rises up and then is evacuated by this uh, valve. And this is the expansion tank. So if there's, any, if there's too much pressure from the hot water in the uh, pipes, the pressure expansion tank it helps to elevate to the pressure. So this pretty much is the setup. In terms of the electricity, uh, we have the brown cable here that is connected to the thermostat, which is uh, on the other side of the wall. And here we have the switch relay. So I'll just walk you through the switch relay now. The electricity is coming here. Switch relay is connected to the pump. And what controls this kind of brain of the operation is the thermostat. So when the thermostat calls for heat in the other room, it sends the signal to the switch relay, switch relay sends the signal to the pump, and then the pump starts pumping the water through the system. When I was setting this up, I didn't actually realize that these flow meters came close from the factory, and so I wasn't able to get any water flowing through the pipes. But then I realized that they needed to be open, and if you have a similar situation where you install everything and there seems to be no water going through the pipes, even if you open these valves, what you need to do is simply lift these protective caps and here you see the difference between a closed and a open flow meter you just need to unscrew this all the way like that and then that will ensure that the water will flow through the pipes so in my case because i do have a thermostat the thermostat is pretty much controlling the whole system it's everything is on and off but if you did not have a switch relay you can technically use these independent zones to control how much heat you're getting in the different rooms. So right now everything is is open to the maximum because it is controlled by the thermostat, but if it wasn't, I could potentially have lower, a smaller flow of water here, uh, no flow of water here, for example, and maximum flow of water here. How much you wanna heat the different rooms or different zones in your home or your garage or whatnot. It is important when you're adding water to the system to control the pressure of the water going in. The water coming in from the city usually is around 65, 70, 70 PSI. It could be higher. In my case, I actually had a bit higher. I bought this uh, pressure regulator. On one side, I connected just a simple water hose. And on the other side, I connected it to the uh, upper portion of the manifold. And then I closed all the valves and I would open one valve at a time and let the entire zone fill up with water before moving on to the other one. All right, so this wraps up the project of installing the manifold as well as different components of the in-floor radiant heat system. I hope you found this useful. I personally really enjoyed going through this project and installing the different components and as well as uh, heating the basement now that is pretty much heated exclusively with this system. Uh, I hope you found this useful and I will see you next time.